Hi, I'm Anja Anchevska, and I'm the General Manager of UITP in Australia and New Zealand. Today, I want to start by sharing with you a little bit about who we are and what we do at UITP, and then I'll present on international public transport innovations, highlighting the work done in three cities, looking at opportunities to accelerate green mobility, and the innovations, technology, and bold decision making that will set the tone for the future of this magnificent industry. As this slide illustrates, UITP covers all sustainable modes of transport, including rail, light rail, bus, actor transport, and on-demand services. Essentially, we are working for a world where mobility focuses on moving people, not cars. Globally, UITP has 1,800 members from 100 countries. We have 16 offices around the world with our headquarters in Brussels, Belgium. We advocate for sustainable mobility solutions, share knowledge and expertise, and create networking opportunities for our members. We do this by releasing publications and statistics, organizing industry events, leading research and innovation projects, and running training sessions. You can find out all about this on our website, uitp.org. In Australia and New Zealand, we have around 80 members and we're governed by a board which includes representatives from government and industry across Australia and New Zealand. Across our membership, we've noticed that there are a number of themes and initiatives that are catching on not only in our region, but also globally to ensure that public transport remains a viable and attractive option for all citizens. It is clear that investment in technology and sustainability is the way forward for the advancement of our industry. The level of uncertainty and severe restriction of movement brought on by the global pandemic highlighted the critical role of public transport in achieving targets such as reducing emissions and alleviating congestion to make our cities more lovable and livable. So this graphic from the National Association of City Transportation Officials is one of my favorite because it illustrates the impact that mass transportation can have on a space and place. We will discuss how Oslo, Singapore, and Sydney are using technology to provide customers with more travel choices so that they can get out of the car and out of traffic and on with their lives. Another thing these cities have in common is a commitment to sustainable public transport and they are not alone. One of the initiatives undertaken by transport authorities, operators and suppliers the world over has been the transition to zero emission public transport with several jurisdictions bringing forward their commitments to transition their fleets as soon as 2025. So we have answered the question of if there will be a transition and now are focused on defining the when and how. This picture shows the Wargate Memorial in India on 17th October 2019, months before the nationwide lockdown. And the bottom picture shows how air pollution levels dropped during that lockdown by 8th of April 2020. Startling images aside, the imperative for our industry to invest and accelerate the transition is clear. The transition to zero emissions is one exciting opportunity for transport to show leadership. However, the innovation does not end there. There are several jurisdictions where it is clear that the contribution that public transport makes to society and social equity has been embedded into the corporate vision and approach. In Oslo, the CEO of the Public Transport Authority, Ruter, Bernd Reiten Jensen, says that sustainable freedom of movement starts with democracy in the city's transport system. To actualize these words, he and his team has transformed Oslo's public transport system with the support of its citizens and politicians through shared ambitious targets to grow the city without growing traffic. To start, Bernd empowered his team to abandon the approach of mass surveying in favor of going out into the streets and asking customers directly for their feedback. The teams came back and shared information and decided that if they've heard an idea more than a few times from these surveys, then the idea was probably a good one. 
Then they went about implementing changes based on that feedback, such as using AI to convert data received on touch points across the network into knowledge, which then provided automated responses to customers' queries and concerns. They will also soon launch an app combining travel planning with public transport, micro mobility, and car sharing options with the ability to pay. This concept is frequently referred to as mobility as a service. The team at Ruder are also trying to understand how autonomous vehicles will impact future services, with Norway being one of the top three cities in the world trialing autonomous transport experience, experiments. And finally, Bernd and his team have not forgotten about the transition to zero emissions, with 100% of their bus fleet on the path to being zero emissions presently by 2028, and 50% of their ferry fleet already converted to electric. Another jurisdiction with a strong vision for public transport is Singapore. As part of their Smart Nation initiative, Smart Urban Mobility is a strategic national project. The Land Transport Authority, or LTA, has articulated a vision for all journeys to the nearest neighborhood using walk, cycle, or ride modes of transport to take less than 20 minutes. To achieve this goal, Singapore is on a mission to add their cycling network and introduce self-driving bus services that adjust their routes to passenger demand. They will undertake a pilot deployment of AVs as public transport in the upcoming development areas of Pungal and Tanga in the early 2020s, with a pilot in the Jurong Innovation District running across two routes having just concluded on the 30th of April. And their efforts to become more sustainable are also significant. In 2016, the bus contracting model was changed so that all bus assets and infrastructure are owned by the government. This means that LTA is responsible for ensuring new bus infrastructure is, is suitable for cleaner energy buses. The current fleet consists of almost 6,000 buses and they are trialing various zero emission buses to determine what works best for their conditions and they've even deployed 10 double-decker e-buses in October 2020. By using a whole-of-government approach, working closely with land use and energy authorities, Singapore is future-proofing their infrastructure to prepare for the introduction of a cleaner energy fleet by 2040. And closer to home, we must highlight the work undertaken by Transport for New South Wales to contribute to the greater Sydney vision of a metropolis of three cities where most residents live within 30 minutes of their jobs, education and health facilities, services and great places. The Sydney Metro is Australia's biggest public transport project. By the end of the decade, the network will consist of 46 stations with more than 113 kilometers for Sydney. This project has increased the appetite for the use of technology, not only on the Metro, but across the various transport modes. And this excitement is being actioned by Transport for New South Wales with their open data approach and their commitment to being a leader in environmental and sustainability performance. Through their Travel Choices Program, which aims to change the travel demand by redistributing customer trips to other modes, times or routes, Transport for New South Wales has recognized the enabling role of technology in delivering a vibrant transport network. Through their open data hub and development portal, developers, entrepreneurs, and data analysts are invited to enter innovation challenges run by the department and access over 200 data sets so that they can create their own apps or otherwise contribute to the future transport program. To date, there have been over 10 million API requests from third parties. The benefits of enabling such innovations have been realized with projects such as the World First Trial, where Sydney commuters are able to pay for their Uber, taxi, or bike shares with their digital Opal cards, as well as their traditional public transport options, such as ferry, bus, or train. 
and not to be outdone in terms of sustainability, I will mention that some of these journeys will take place on zero emission buses and ferries in the very near future with the recent commitment to transfer their 8,000 strong bus fleet to zero emissions by 2030. Overall, the future of public transport is bright. We have made significant strides in articulating the benefits of inclusive, sustainable mass transportation and the impacts that access to transport have on our economies and environments. But we cannot underestimate that there has been an erosion of confidence brought on by the pandemic and reinforced by sometimes irresponsible messaging. To counter that, we must highlight the work that we are doing to improve our service offerings through technology, innovation, and our commitment to our customers. And we must be clear about the value proposition that we as an industry have to offer. Our customers expect to be reassured through timely, connected, comfortable services, and they want those services to be sustainable. We have moved into a sphere where real-time information and on-demand services that were once seen as amenities are now seen as the baseline expectation, and we must endeavor to provide a personalized, integrated journey that moves people to where they want to go when they want to get there. According to Natsin research undertaken on behalf of the UK Department for Transport in 2019 on the topic of transport and inequality, affordable access to opportunities is at the center of the relationship between transport and inequality. These opportunities include education and training, paid work, and social inclusion through the access to activities, goods, and services. To encourage equitable access to these opportunities, transport policy needs to take into account the nuanced dynamics of disadvantage experienced by different groups. In 2017, the UITP and the World Bank partnered to shed light on the needs of women as public transport users. And the message was simple, make public transport accessible for all. With our PT for Me and Women in Leadership campaigns combined, UITP is focused on all aspects of women in the sector, from passengers to workers, showing how important it is to include women at every level. I've included the QR code on my slide if you want to show your support for our gender-inclusive public transport initiatives. In addition to inclusion, the future of our transport networks must be sustainable. A study by the Transport Studies Unit from the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom collected travel data activity from over 10,000 participants for two years in seven European cities and derived that life cycle CO2 emissions across modes and purposes and found that if just one in five urban residents permanently switched from driving to cycling for just one trip per day, it reduced their carbon footprint by about half a ton of CO2 over the course of a year and saved the equivalent emissions of a one-way flight from London to New York. In Australia and New Zealand, we recently held the Zero Emissions Bus Forum and released the report and key findings. We are on the cusp of a significant step change with zero emission buses in our region and UITP Australia and New Zealand is supporting private and public sector partners and stakeholders to prepare for that transition and capitalize on it. Commitments are being made and we believe the transition will be accelerated as every Australian state and territory, as well as the New Zealand government, has committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2050, and transport is a key player in meeting those targets. Auckland Transport has already committed to procure only zero emission buses from 2025 and could have a fully zero emissions bus fleet as early as 2030. Transport Canberra has a plan to transition its bus fleet to zero emissions by 2040. Wellington will grow their zero emission bus fleet to over 100 in the next two years. Transport for New South Wales is working to electrify the state's 8,000 buses by 2030. 
Queensland's Department of Transport and Main Roads is progressively rolling out zero emission buses in Southeast Queensland from 2025 and regional centers will get them by 2030. The South Australian Public Transport Authority is rolling out seven hybrid buses and has also recently put its first locally built electric bus into operation. The Public Transport Authority of Western Australia has ordered four battery electric buses, which will start service in early 2022. And the Victorian Department of Transport has committed $20 million to zero emission bus trial for research and planning and have committed to purchase zero emission buses from 2025. With that being said, diesel buses are losing their social license to operate. The average bus burns around 7,000 liters of diesel a year, which equates to 18 tons of CO2. If we want a future of clean air and decongested roads, public transport must be the backbone of how people travel. If any of this information resonates and you want to find out more, I've included our contact details on this slide so you can find us on LinkedIn and Twitter or get in touch with us via email. So thank you. And I'll now join you live to take your questions.